In the series of Doclex's KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. Shelly Prasad. He is the Executive Director of Center for Global Health and Social Responsibility, University of Minnesota, the USA. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Prasad. Thank you, Adarsh. Uh, Dr. Prasad, you have had uh, nearly three, uh, three decades of experience. Can you take us through your journey of uh, you know, working in rural health? Sure. So um, my experience has been varied. A uh, significant amount of it was in India, okay. in rural and tribal areas bordering Karnataka and Kerala. Um, and subsequent to that, uh, I did a lot of my primary care, family medicine training in the US okay. and public health training. Okay. And was a rural practitioner mm. in the US mm -hmm. for many years too. Okay. Um, so it's a sum total of multiple sites, but okay. the common thread has been in rural and underserved care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, for the past 10 years, I've been in Minnesota, okay. uh, again in underserved care, okay. uh, in urban underserved care, and strongly associated with rural health and rural health research mm -hmm. at the University mm -hmm. of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. uh, my current designation, that of the being the director of the Center for Global Health and Social Responsibility, in some ways is a natural continuation of okay. that. Okay. Though within the realm of global health, we do research education and capacity building in mm -hmm. multiple countries around the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Doctor, you were talking about, you know, unserved uh, areas uh, or underserved areas uh, in urban uh, localities. So, uh, can you tell us about, uh, you know, what uh, do you mean by underserved areas? Because in urban areas, they, they, I mean, it's the general perception is that you would have access to healthcare, but then what exactly is the challenge? Sure. Um, it's it's a common misperception that uh, because somebody is in an urban area, they have better access. Mm. Uh, there might be geographic proximity to a healthcare delivery setup, but quite often the geographic proximity does not translate to good access. Mm. Uh, some of it might be around health-seeking behavior. Mm. Some of it may be economic challenges. Mm. Some of it may be just the sheer knowledge gap that exists. Okay. Um, this phenomenon is quite prevalent in slums of India, for example, okay. um, and slums in other parts of the world too. Uh, in the US, we see this in uh, particular neighborhoods mm -hmm. where um, the access to physician care might be constrained partly by insurance or lack mm -hmm. of insurance. Mm -hmm. And then some of the health seeking behavior mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. community's viewpoint mm -hmm. might preclude them from actually using healthcare mm -hmm. facilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, uh, India, you know, came out with this uh, health insurance scheme for uh, families. Uh, do you think uh, that uh, serves the purpose here? I mean, is is that going to improve access to healthcare? So, um, the there is some interesting studies around uh, improving coverage. That's what we mm. call when mm. people get insurance. Coverage does help. Okay. Um, universal coverage is shown to help significantly. Mm -hmm. There are certain, but please understand that coverage is not the final answer. Mm. It's one part of the mm. answer. Mm. Part of it is because with coverage, are you assuring good coverage? Mm. Because there's this phenomenon called underinsurance. Okay. You might physically have an insurance mm. card, mm. but how much will that insurance card cover? Okay, that's one. And is there a tiered system where some, for example, socioeconomically poor folks mm. get one kind of coverage, mm. whereas people from the elite and middle class get a different kind of coverage? Correct. That actually might cause further disparity in the services that are delivered to. Okay. Uh, how do you think, uh, you know, your center and conferences like these, uh, you know, uh, how can these two come together and, you know, you know help improve uh, rural health care? Um, to be honest with you, I'm a big believer, and there is some literature behind this, that professional conferences are great for networking. Okay, okay. Uh, the content part of it may not be as important particularly in this day of the social media mm -hmm. revolution and others, you can get content elsewhere. Yeah. But the networking is an important part of amplifying your signal, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you are looking at um, colleagues from another part of the world doing a very interesting model, networking and physically having the interaction would actually make that a replicable project, right. as opposed to seeing it on the internet mm -hmm. and not mm -hmm. sure exactly mm -hmm. how to proceed. 
I love what happens in between sessions more often than what happens in the session. Okay. Having said that, there are some interesting ideas that come about. Um, the fact that we are talking about rural health as a world phenomenon, if you will, this is a World Rural Health Conference mm -hmm. after all, mm -hmm. is an important thing because I think there are lessons we can learn from each other. Some of it is about exchanges of ideas, some of it is, is about exchange of personnel, mm -hmm. some of it is about actually making policy level changes okay. for the long term. Okay. Uh, Doctor, uh, your center, uh, one half of it is about social responsibility. Mm. Um, how uh, actively do you see uh, entrepreneurs uh, coming into the foray of social entrepreneurship? Do you see, uh, uh, you know, youngsters taking up social entrepreneurs in, entrepreneurship in the field of healthcare? Uh, relatively less. Okay. Um, the phenomenon of social responsibility in healthcare has been not uh, a long history of it. Um, the phenomenon of global health itself uh, has gone through a few iterations okay. um, and there has been some criticism of global health being a new form of colonialism okay. uh, of um, you know high income countries sending their people and doing whatever they want mm -hmm. and then going back home and then forgetting what happened okay. or maybe get some fancy Facebook photos with a starving child and that's about it. Okay. That's not really global health. Uh, true global health is about partnerships, about studying with and, you know, with your colleagues, okay. building capacity with your partners, that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so the social responsibility angle of it is that. Okay. The second part is uh, any field, the higher up you get in the field, you tend to get in your own narrow corners. Mm -hmm. uh, you develop some fascinating science, mm -hmm. you advance science. Um, but you may not actually do what's relevant to communities that you're in. So from our center, we're asking the question about mm -hmm. how do we do things that are relevant to okay. context and country okay. and communities? And that's where the social responsibility part of it comes in. Now, a lot of people equate the social responsibility besides the ethical part of it mm -hmm. as a continuation of corporate social responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's something to keep in mind too. Okay. I think that's an interesting um, add-on to the social responsibility conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, doctor, the last question. Um, you know, how do you think uh, digital uh, technology can play a role in improving uh, global health? Um, I'm going to answer this in two ways. Okay. There's obviously a role in uh, using technological platforms to improve access, mm. uh, improve consultation. Uh, there are some fascinating models around. Uh, I can come up with um, off the head, off the top of my head. I can come off. Uh, with an example on hepatitis C treatment called mm -hmm. ECHO, mm -hmm. where uh, rural providers, providers in remote areas, could access a, a quick consultation model. Okay. And that's shown to be very effective, so you don't need consultants in very mm -hmm. remote areas, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. physically not possible. Okay. Um, I want to also be a little cautious, uh, and the caution there is, we tend to look at technology as a solution, mm -hmm. and I want to keep technology as a tool. Okay. The tool it is, that of networking and otherwise, is something very important. So I'm not minimizing that in any way. But that does not substitute the relationship angle between individuals, okay. between physician and patient. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I feel the technological tool can swamp the individual relationship angle that might actually be counterproductive in the long term. Okay. So in other words, let's look at it as a tool. Okay. Very important. And if you keep that in mind, you, I think, optimizes the tool function of it much more, mm -hmm. as opposed to use it as a substitute okay. for good care. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure having with, uh, you with us. I appreciate this. Thank you, sir. Thank you.